God of Abraham praise, who reigns in throne above, ancient of everlasting days, and God of love. To him uplift your voice, and to his supreme command. From earth we rise and seek the joys at his right hand. He by his sword has sworn, I on his oath depend. I shall on eagle's wings aboard to heaven ascend. I shall behold his face, I shall his power adore, and see the wonders of his grace for Before we begin, I'd like to welcome everyone to our 4 p.m. Mass. Also to those who will be watching this online, welcome as well. So let us start. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. My brothers and sisters, as we acknowledge our sins, so as to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true. Grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, if someone has on his skin a scab or a pustule or a blotch, which appears to be the sore of leprosy, he shall be brought to Aaron the priest or to one of the priests among his descendants. If the man is leprous and unclean, the priest shall declare him unclean by reason of the sore on his head. The one who bears the sore of leprosy shall keep his garments rent and his head bare, and shall muffle his beard. He shall cry out, unclean, unclean. As long as the sore is on him, he shall declare himself unclean, since he is in fact unclean. He shall dwell apart, making his abode outside the camp. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. Blessed is he whose fault is taken away, whose sin is covered. Bless the man to whom the Lord imputes not guilt, in whom spirit there is no guile. Then I acknowledged my sin to you, my guilt I covered not. I said, I confess my faults to the Lord, and you took away the guilt of my sin. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you just. Exalt all you upright of heart. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. Avoid giving offense, whether to the Jews or Greeks or the church of God. Just as I try to please everyone in every way, not seeking my own benefit, but that of the many, that they may be saved. Be imitators of me, as I am of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to Mark, a leper came to Jesus and kneeling down begged him and said, If you wish, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, he stretched out his hand, touched him, and said to him, I do will it, be made clean. The leprosy left him immediately, and he was made clean. Then warning him sternly, he dismissed him at once. He said to him, 
See that you tell no one anything, but go, show yourself to the priest, and offer your cleansing what Moses prescribed. That will be proof for them. The man went away and began to publicize the whole matter. He spread the report abroad so that it was impossible for Jesus to enter a town openly. He remained outside in deserted places, and people kept coming to him from everywhere. The Gospel of the Lord. Good evening, brothers and sisters in Christ. Today is um, the ACA Sunday. This is one of those Sundays where we promote one of the Archdiocese's uh, annual Catholic appeal. So, the, where you know, many parishes have to do this not once but twice. Two weeks in a row, sometimes three, and we're not. We're going to do it just one, one weekend, and that's it. I don't want to be begging and pleading with you to uh, keep giving, you know. So just so that we're clear, the annual Catholic Appeal is an archdiocesan fundraiser in which their goal is, is two and a half million. One time it was at three. So our goal is 27,500, and fortunately we have made it every single year. And I want to thank all of those who gave to ACA last year. It's wonderful that you have given. And those of you that haven't given, well, y'all plead with you. I'll beg, beg you, please, give something. It helps, you know, when we meet our goal, then, of course, uh, whatever comes in after that goal, uh, is, it will come as a rebate. So, this year's theme is, Come to Christ, One and All. And, you know, ACA is committed to help donors share their financial gifts in an effort to support the mission and ministry of Jesus Christ throughout the Archdiocese to every parish. The funds donated to ACA support the Archdiocesan Ministries. And if I can get everybody to pass down the brochures that are at the ends of the pew and just pass down the, the pledge card and the brochure, and this way you know what I'm talking about. And, and pass a pen with a pledge card. Um, it helps to understand when, when you see the, the brochure. In the past several years, in the brochure, there was a pie chart. Well, no longer a pie chart. It just gives a certain percent. But you know, these ministries help the, the, the parishes in their spiritual needs, the educational needs, the physical needs, and the people in the Archdiocese of Santa Fe may develop a more vibrant Catholic community and support the needs of the wider Archdiocesan Church. So, you know, the Archdiocese, praise God, has finished the bankruptcy. And just to remind you, none of these monies go to any part of any of the claims or in the future claims. They stay within the Archdiocese. Uh, pledges are requested during the active campaign period from February all the way uh, to the end of the year. Uh, and as I said, I, I thank all of those wonderful uh, people who have given generously to ACA. Just a reminder, every dollar does really count. Um, and let's see, last year when we exceeded, we did get uh, $27,543 back. That money went back to the general account. Just to give you some ideas of our growth, um, we have 2,000 registered families in the Church of Incarnation. 
And only 225 of those families have given to ACA. So I know, you know, everyone could give whatever it is. Um, so look at that brochure. You're going to see a percent um, of what goes where. You can see on the brochure, 31% will be spent on community outreach. And there's a little paragraph of all the, the different ministries that it touches. 25% were spent on clergy education and support. 19% uh, was spent in education and evangelization and 13% uh, on pastoral services. Um, now, oh, just to let you know also, we have 12 seminarians studying to be uh, in the priesthood, two to be ordained. Um, and you know how it is in the archdiocese, we're still praying for more vocations to the priesthood. So your prayers are absolutely needed uh, for more vocations. Um, so let's look at this card. Some of you may have seen this card before. It's a pledge card that um, is with an envelope. And if you look at it, there is a place on the top, the left-hand side, that says, please print, which would be your first name, your spouse, and your last name on that first line. Your address on the next line, the city would put in there Rio Rancho, the next, and then the state, of course, New Mexico, and then your um, zip code. If you want to put down an email, put down an email. Um, a telephone number, uh, just to uh, make sure that you know you are who you are, and the parish. Now, sometimes people won't put the parish down, but you got to put down the Church of Incarnation. Because, no, you know, the money, where's this, who's going to get the credit? Well, we will if you put down the parish. So uh, it's important that you put down the Church of Incarnation. The donor's name down there, and then the date at the bottom. Now, on the right-hand side of this card, the total pledge for 2024 will be whatever you want it to be. Some people give a hundred, some people give a thousand, um, and you know, whatever it is, five bucks, ten bucks, we'll take it. Put something down there, whatever it might be. And then underneath that, total contribution, uh, whatever you want that to be. And then the balance uh, to be paid by, the, by December. Now, if you want to be reminded, there's a place to be checked um, underneath these boxes monthly quarterly, uh, or semi-annually, or not. Payment options, you can do check, money order, online, or even stocks or mutual funds. Uh, but please make the check out to the annual Catholic appeal, not to incarnation, but to the annual Catholic appeal. Um, also, uh, there's uh, whatever you wish to give. On the back of this pledge card, there's examples of ways our combined gifts can help others. $35 sponsors one man to attend the annual Men Under Construction Conference. $100 sponsors a young person can attend the Catholic Christian Leadership Institute. $200 pays for one speaker for one full day of formation for 100 ministers registered for schools of Spanish. $300 sponsors a Building Healthy Relationships six-week course for up to 20 couples. And then, of course, the, the, the bottom two uh, are for other groups, uh, groups. Mariposa Support Group for Families Struggling with Addictions, and you know how important the need for that is. And then at the very bottom, $960 provides room and board for one seminarian for one month. The expenses keep on coming. 
So if you have the time at this time, you may fill this out and put it in the envelope, seal it. Uh, if you don't want to, that's fine too. Uh, but we certainly, please take it home, think about it, pray about it, and know that whatever you give, it is, has great value. Um, and you do help the diocese. You know, for wh whatever reason, if we couldn't meet our goal, then it would be coming out of our own account. Uh, so this is why I plead with you so that we don't have to do that. We've never had to do that. The, your generosity has been absolutely stellar. So uh, if those people would like to just fill out those uh, pledge cards and put it in the envelope, at the end of Mass, you can drop them off in baskets. There'll be two people in the back. Um, and you can uh, seal your envelope and put it in the baskets as you leave the church at the end of Mass. So I'm just going to speak about the Gospel just a little bit here. You know, Jesus healed that leprosy. And everybody knew at that time leprosy is impossible to, to, to cure. Absolutely impossible. So when Jesus did it before everyone, everybody's jaw just about fell. You know, I was thinking of how sometimes it doesn't have to be leprosy. And Jesus would always heal and cure a lot of people and forgive their sins. That's the important part that Jesus did. But you know, there was uh, a man who was brought up Catholic and he certainly had all these sacraments, but the world corrupted him. He didn't come to church anymore. He didn't come to, to, to practice his faith. He was so corrupt. And you know, he just struggled with everything. And then he came down with cancer. And boy, did that shock him. And he knew he was coming to the end of, the, of his life because the doctor told him, hey, prepare yourself, your whole body's got cancer. And he thought to himself, and he was recalling his whole life. And he remembered how big a cheater he was. Every business that he worked for, he would cheat the employer. He lied to the employer. He lied to everybody. He didn't care. And he knew what he was doing. And you know, whenever he got another job, he was selling vehicles. And he exaggerated. And he sold a lot of cars. And they were all nothing but lemons. He didn't care. So what? He believed only the strongest survived and the weakest, well, they perish. It's what he lived by. So the sacraments, he didn't care. His wife divorced him. His children left him because they couldn't take his bad attitude, his low honor, lack of integrity. And, he, and you know, he began to think and dwell about all these different things. And when he was in the hospital at the last few days of his life, you know, there was a priest that would come by and he, he said, no, no, priest, I don't need you. I did it my way. And he began to think. He didn't have much time. He thought to himself, well, everything's okay. I'm going to heaven. It doesn't matter. And then an evil spirit came right up to his ear. Who says you're going to heaven? You're coming with me. Didn't you know that? And he knew it was the devil. And he thought to himself, no, no, get out of here. I'm going to heaven. Why do you think you're going to heaven? You denied God. You didn't do anything that was good while you were alive. You didn't care. And he thought to himself, that's right, I didn't. And the devil said, you've been listening to us all this time. Why do you think you're going to heaven? And it was a shock to him. And he began to say, bring me the priest. Bring me the priest so I can go to confession. I don't want to go to this place. And so the priest came in because the nurses called the priest. And he said to the priest, you know, priest, I'm so sorry I kicked you out of here. I didn't realize how bad that I was. 
And he explained to the priest that this evil spirit came into his room and whispered to him that he wasn't going to heaven. And he wanted to remedy that. And so the priest told him, you confess all your sins here today and you'll make it into the kingdom of God. And so he, he thought to himself, I'm ready. And boy, did he have a long list of sins. And he repeated them for a soul, a soul long. And so the, pre, the priest stayed there until he finished his confession. And, you know, soon after that, uh, he died. But he was in the grace of God. He was healed like that leper in the gospel who wanted to be healed so badly. And he was. He was healed spiritually because he confessed his sins. You may not have leprosy, but we all know we got sins. And so, brothers and sisters, we want to be able to wash away our sins and to be clean. You never know when the Lord's going to call us. It's a shock, you know, every time I hear somebody who's very healthy, and then all of a sudden they come down with a, a stomach ache or a back ache or a headache, and they find that they have some kind of a terminal cancer, four stage, and they only have just a short time. It's a shocker. And I think it'll shock you if you're not prepared. So we ask the Lord God to always give us the graces to persevere and to be at peace. This man who died stood before the Lord God and the demons were all there as God gave him the sentence. And the, de the demons argued with God. This is one of ours, Lord. He's, he's not yours. He did bad all his life. And God said to him, he repented at the end. He was spiritually clean. Yes, he's going to go spend some time in purgatory. But he's ready in time to come into my kingdom. And thus evil spirits vanished. And that's what we want to do. Make sure all the evil spirits vanish. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us stand to profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, Light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. We pray that the church may be an instrument of God's mercy through her mission and outreach to those most in need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That world and local leaders may seek the poor and forsaken, giving them the dignity and assistance they deserve as children of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That church leaders may bear witness to God's gift and plan for marriage and assist couples to live that vocation faithfully. 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may look upon the unborn as children who belong to God and who deserve the same respect and protection as every other human being, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood and religious life, especially from within our own archdiocese, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick in our daily prayers, that God's healing touch may bring them peace and comfort, especially Mark Stock, Reuben Modis, John Pose, and Pat Bowden. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the souls of faithful departed, especially Luke Condit, Mike Pacheco, Betty Ann McDermott, Clyde Archuleta, Mike Abruzzi, and Roland Bibio, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Special intentions for this evening's Mass are for our beloved dead, for the repose of the souls of Elodia Valdez, Conceda Macaron, and Emilia Zarella. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God the Father, mercies hear our prayers and petitions. We ask them in faith, and we ask them through our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The offertory hymn is hymn number 707. I heard the voice of Jesus say, number 707. and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, 
always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal, for having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he. Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and John, our Archbishop, and all those who hold him to the truth and on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves, and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true, in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things we may be defended by your protecting help through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant 
which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of the holy angel to your altar and I, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. <coughs> Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, and thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven, and give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. The peace of Christ be with you. Peace. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The communion hymn is hymn number 954, Lord, who at your first Eucharist, number 954.
back to the faith which saints believe of all, back to the church with still that faith does keep. Thus they may all one bread, one body be through this person. Jesus, my Lord, my God, my all, how can I love thee as I ought? And how revere this wondrous gift, so far surpassing hope for thee. Sacrament we thee adore, O Maker's love thee more and more, O Maker's love thee more and more. Had I but Mary Pastor of the flock, 
we crowd in love about thy feet. Our voices yearn to praise thee, Lord, and joyfully thy presence greet. Sweet sacrament, we thee adore. Oh, make us love thee more and more. Oh, make us love thee more. Let us pray. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live through Christ our Lord. Well, this coming Wednesday, February the 14th, is Ash Wednesday. The Mass times are 7 a.m. and confessions will be at 6. 12.10, confessions will be at 11. And 6 p.m. and confessions will be at 5. Now remember, it's a fast day and also abstaining from meat. Now, no beef. No pork, no chicken, no goat, no red-blooded animals. You could eat fish or peanut butter and jelly or all the pasta you want. People forget. So if you're going to eat that pizza, make sure there's no pepperoni or sausage. No hot dogs, no tacos. People forget. Oh, I forgot, Father. I forgot. So, remember, it is abstaining from meat on Wednesday. And uh, actually, uh, the fasting for those who can. Now, if you have diabetes or if you have another disease, 
uh, you're exempt from fasting. Um, so, but the, the ones that are healthy, yes. The mass schedule um, on Fridays, we have added a mass every Friday in the evening. So there'll be the mass in the morning with stations of the cross that follow, and then stations of the cross in the evening and uh, stage the, the, the Mass and the Stations, and I'll be hearing confessions at both Masses. So the opportunity to go to confession is absolutely there. Please join us for a special Holy Hour on February the 15th at 6 p.m., following the 5.30 p.m. Mass with Deacon Mark Gui, titled, I Want to Be Healed Physically, Emotionally, and Spiritually. The annual Lenten food drive will start next weekend. Please see the bulletin for more information. And if you uh, please remember to drop your ACA pledge in the basket with the greeter in the narthex. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. The recessional hymn is hymn number 614. Holy God, we praise thy name, number 614, verses 1, 2, and 4. Thank you. 